Hi there, this is going to be the very first video about the false position method uh, for continuous functions. So the false position method is actually pretty similar to the bisection method and I made a few videos about it, about the bisection method I mean, uh, so you may want to check them out but even if you haven't watched them uh, you're completely free to watch the false position method. Alright, um, so let's start with uh, with a function so let's start with um, I don't know x squared minus x minus 2 equal to 0 so this is gonna be our function um, it's gonna be what uh, what we're gonna try to find or rather approximate um, so let's start with uh, two values uh, my first value x1 uh, is going to be well negative 10 my second value x2 is going to be 0 0.59 all right so um first thing first i'm going to look for um i'm going to basically put uh, those two values uh inside my equation and uh, see which number i'm going to get hopefully i'm gonna get a positive number and a negative number which means that uh, if the function is continuous it's gonna intersect uh, the axis and therefore there must be a point in which it's gonna be zero um, this is actually important because you know the function has to be continuous because if it's not continuous uh, you know this property does not hold all right um so let me let me just do this so f of negative 10 is actually going to be uh, negative 10 squared minus uh, minus 10 minus 2 so uh, this is actually going to be uh, 100 plus 10 minus 2 which is going to me give me 108 there we go so this is my very first value so hopefully 0.59 is going to give me a negative value and uh, if the value is going to be negative then um, we're good because it means that there must be a point uh, between 108 and 0.59 and um, sorry between 108 and the result of the negative value that is going to give me uh, 0.59 um, there's going to be zero so f of um, 0.59 is actually going to be well 0.59 squared minus 0.59 minus 2 is going to give me 0.348 minus 0.59 minus 2 is going to give me negative 2.24 there we go so we have a positive number and a negative number so we can we can sketch a a uh, little graph here so it's gonna be my graph with x and y we are working in the um, with real number so um, it's gonna be a zero um, this is gonna be my number negative 10 this one and this is gonna be 0 0.59 well, it's not the the scale is crap uh, because it's not definitely not on scale, but you know, just to give you an idea. So one hundred eight is gonna be at the very top, and um, a negative ten. My function is gonna is gonna be one hundred eight. So here, um, at zero point fifty nine, it's gonna be negative. So negative two point twenty four. Just expect it to be like I don't know here negative two point twenty four. Oh my god, this is terribly not on scale. Sorry about that. I've never been good to make graph uh, in our one in our two or in our three. So, and you gotta you gotta see what I make with quaternions. They look awful. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, so basically those are um, our two points so basically don't know what the function is gonna do so it may be whatever like anything but we actually expect to cross the axis and go to, to 
to to negative 2.24. So basically, it's gonna it, it, there is there must be a point if the function is continuous in which it's gonna be zero. So with that in mind, um, I'm gonna use the following formula right now, um, which is basically I'm gonna write it in um, in green for the false position method we have xr equal to x2 times f of x1 minus x1 times f of x2 everything over f of x1 minus f of x2 so basically what this uh, this formula is saying is that i'm gonna take x2 um so 0.59 uh, x2 uh, times f of x1 so the result of uh, x1 so 108 minus x1 so negative 10 times f of x2 so negative 2.24 so let's do this xr is actually going to be um, 0 0.59 times 108 minus negative 10 times um, negative 2.24 Averaging over 108 minus negative 2.24, uh, which is actually gonna give me 63.72 minus uh, 22.4 over 108 plus 2.24. Uh, which is going to give me 41.32 over 110.24 which is going to give me 0.37 um, therefore we're going to have um, 0. Point at, um, we're going to have an um, 0.37 so like um, here 0.37 pretty much and now we're basically going to place 0 0.37, so the point uh, that we have just found, and um, we're going to plug in back into our function and see whether what's, what's going to be its value, so whether it's going to be negative or positive. So um, f of 0 0.37 is actually going to be, well, 0.37 squared minus 0.37 minus 2 which was our original function so this is actually going to give me um, 0.1369 minus uh, 0.37 minus 2 is going to give me negative 2.23 Okay, so indeed, uh, it's still going to be negative, so 2.23, uh, so here. Um, and now we could actually go on and uh, try to find, you know, another value and uh, do other iteration. But I'm just going to stop here because, you know, well, should I go on? Well, no, I'm just going to stop here. But anyway, the, it's, it's you know, the, the, the concept is pretty much similar. You know, you, you, you basically say, okay, um, this negative uh, 2.33, okay, so uh, 0.37 would be my uh, next x. So instead of having, you know, x1 and x2 those as those two, um, I'm going to search a value between um, negative 10 and 0 0.37. Okay, 
Okay, so, well, uh, I just, I'm not gonna compute this, all right? I'm not gonna compute this, I'm just gonna show you. So basically, you know, it's negative. It was going, if it was going to be positive, it would have been different, but if it's negative, it means that, you know, it's not gonna pass between 0 0.37 and 0 0.59, okay? So it's gonna pass between uh, negative 10 and uh, 0 0.37. So basically, um, negative 10 is still going to be my x1 and 0.37 is going to be my x2 so in this case uh, my xr2 uh, so those will be xr1 xr2 will be x2 so 0.37 times the value of f of x1 so it's still going to be uh, 108 uh, minus that's my minus sign x1 uh, which is negative 10 times uh, the value of x2 uh, which is uh, you know 0.37 blah 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 negative 2.23 so times negative 2.23 well shall we compute this well okay so f and then we have over everything over f of x1 minus f of x2 so f of x1 um, is actually 108, so I'm going to be unchanged, minus f of x2 is um, negative uh, 2.23, negative 2.23, right? Uh, so this is actually going to give me, uh, well, 0 0.37 times 108, um, that is going to give me 39.96 uh, minus uh, this one is going to be 22.3 because negative negative is going to give me positive so 22.3 uh, over uh, this one is going to be 108 plus 2.23 so this one is actually going to be you know 39 39.96 uh, minus 22.3 that's going to give me 17.66 over uh, 108 plus 2.23 just 110.23 so um 17.66 over 110.23 is uh roughly 0 0.16 so um this is actually going to be my next uh, xr2 so i'm going to write here right here 0 0.16 and uh let's compute f of 0.16 so f of 0.16 is going to be you know we're going to plug 0.16 into our equation and into our function so f of 0.16 is going to be 0.16 squared minus 0.16 minus 2 which is also going to give me 0.16 times 0.16 will be 0.0256 uh, minus 0.16 minus 2 which is actually going to give me well um, I think negative 2.13 all right so you know at uh, 0.16 um, still going to be negative but not by um, so much so and there's 2.13 and so on so you know you, you see what's happening right we, we we actually expect it to cross it so it will be the approximation our approximation will be like like kind of like kind of like this you know we expect it to 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 go from from here to here so you know by going by keeping to do that like going eventually between negative 10 and 0 0.16 and another value and another value and another value eventually 
we're gonna get a value that uh, is getting you know closer and closer and closer and closer to zero and it's actually gonna be zero you know like uh, we want it to be zero and uh, it will because you know it's gonna cross the axis so this is the basic idea I just stopped at um, you know XR2 but I can go on and do XR3 4 5 6 7 XR 100 and so on so you know and you're gonna get you know a, a value which is gonna be closer and closer and closer and closer uh, to zero and eventually it's gonna be zero itself so um, this is the false position method I'm gonna post a few more video about this method and they're gonna be fairly interesting so um, stay tuned bye for now